The Garmin Autoland system has become a fixture in turbine aircraft with computerized engines and auto throttles. Now, Cirrus is bringing the same potentially life-saving technology to single-engine piston airplanes. If a pilot becomes incapacitated or overwhelmed, Safe Return can take control of the airplane at the touch of a single button. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Okay, here we go. Engaging now. All right, so we're gonna push the auto land, uh, the safe return button. You have the first 10 seconds that it gives you this oral warning, it gives you a visual warning, and I can deactivate it within this 10, 10 seconds. And all it does is just, uh, it deactivates the um, safe return and it just goes back to hand flying. It seems like it just, it just added power. Yep, so basically what's happening now is the safe return system has been activated now and it's gone into the next phase of the sequence which is basically it's engaged the the first thing it did was engage the autopilot in level mode and then it shifts into the phase of looking at the surrounding airports calculating the route to the airport basically letting the passengers know that safe return has taken over the control of the airplane you saw the throttle move you saw the mixture move um, the autopilot's obviously uh, uh, engaged, it's using those autopilot servos, and now it's navigating to Martinsburg. So it's chosen Martinsburg as the airport that's the most applicable airport. It's looking for an airport that's longer than 4,500 feet, it's wider than 75 feet, it's got a GPS approach with vertical guidance, it has a hard surface, um, it's also looking for an airport um, that between you and the airport the weather is conducive to fly through, there's no terrain in the way. It will obviously avoid any terrain that's in the way. It will avoid severe weather. It will still fly through kind of green light precipitation, but it will avoid any severe weather. So now it's engaged the, the safe return system. It's using the autopilot servos to navigate. It's using the software to navigate. It's using the throttle and mixture servos to, to adjust the mixture and the throttle for cruise. So it's looking for that 145 cruise speed, and then it's simplified all of the screens. So you've got the PFD showing you speed, altitude, and a very simplified map, letting the passengers know there's a right turn coming up in a minute. We're gonna be descending for three minutes. We're 14 miles from the airport. We should be landing about seven minutes. And we've got a lot of fuel. We've got 1.8 hours of fuel on board. This also um, gives you the option to talk to air traffic control because the plane is actually communicating with air traffic control now. So the very first thing that it does when it shifts into that phase after that initial first 10 seconds is that it takes over the screens, it squawks emergency. So in the, in the real world, we would be squawking 7700 and it's communicating with ATC. It's broadcasting on 121.5. It's broadcasting on the CTAF frequency or the tower frequency or whatever frequency is the most applicable, declaring the emergency, explaining our intentions. and. For the uh, occupants of the airplane, it's basically just showing a simplified view of what's right. going on. Yeah. Now, for the demo, I've got control over the comps because it's not squawking emergency in demo mode. So now we're basically just flying towards the airport, and shortly the plane will start configuring for landing. Just kind of to, to give you a heads up what's going to happen there, you'll see the throttle start to come back, we'll slow down to an approach speed, the flaps will be deployed to 50%, and it will go through its kind of landing configuration sequence. There goes the, so the here we go, you can back. hear the sound change um, in the engine. The flaps are coming down. You're basically getting directions and an explanation of what's going on and letting the occupants know we're descending for landing. It's configuring for that descent. Here's what you need to do to prepare for landing. Make sure your seatbelt's tight. Make sure you've secured any loose items. And at this point in the sequence, we are now committed to land. So it's not gonna divert, it's not gonna route around anything. We are absolutely committed to landing on runway 26 at Martinsburg. Now that we're configured for landing, it will hold this 95 knot approach speed. And now it's just kind of looking for that 95 knots. It's using a bit of pitch and a bit of power to maintain that 95 knots. And we're just gonna kind of continue inbound for runway 26. It's kind of uh, the oscillations are, I, get, I, I feel they're dampening, but they're, um... That yeah, it's pretty, just pretty big at first. it's just kind of doing what it needs to do to maintain that <clears throat> 95 knots. All right, so as you can see, I've kind of got my 
hands in my lap. And <clears throat> yep. We'll we'll do a, a little bit of a little bit of arms crossed yeah. situation. <laughs> all right. And just letting the the airplane do what it's going to do. The software and the system is assuming that we might have ice on the airplane. So I've actually pulled the circuit breaker so we don't get covered in TKS fluid, but in the real world, we would have TKS, the TKS system working, spraying fluid to make sure that we don't have any ice. And we've got our 50% flaps. So the radar altimeter is working to determine how high we are above the ground. Once we get to about 60 feet above the ground, you'll see the throttle come back. And once we get 50 feet above the ground, it'll kind of start the flare sequence. So you'll see it kind of just fly down the runway and come into that flare. Okay, we're aiming for those thousand footers. All right, here we go. So you'll feel that power start to come back. Gonna sequence into that flare sequence. Looking for the center line. And there we are. So you'll see the flaps start to come up as we roll out and those brakes will start to apply. It'll be a nice even braking pressure. Now that and we're coming to a stop, that mixture is going to start to come back. I haven't touched anything. The brakes are automatic. Okay, here comes that mixture. It's going to pull all the way back. Um, the software has turned off the boost pump, even though the switch is still on, the boost pump is off. As the mixture comes back to the engine shutdown, and then we'll get a screen that explains the airplane and propeller to how to egress from the airplane. airplane. Exiting. Yeah, that's different, all right. To exit, lift nice and safe. On all right, so first auto land to a complete landing and full stop. What did you think? Yeah, I thought that if I was this uh, this autopilot instructor, I'd tell it not to chase the airspeed. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's doing what what the, like the FAA handbook says to do. You know, you use pitch and power together. That part's fine. So it would have passed its private pilot check ride, but maybe it needs a little refining yeah. <laughs> to be an expert pilot. Well put. Yeah, it's it's, it's not going to pass the commercial check ride. Like the lineup, it's it's uh you know it's kind of left left side of the runway, and then at the last minute corrects back toward the center. Yeah. And, you know, you have to remember, it's an emergency system. So right. it's doing things like, you know, it's not equipped with cameras like a self-driving car, right? It's right. actually using, um, it's using directional control with, like, it's sort of using the radar altimeter and the GPS directional control to align with the direction of the runway. Right. Um, it can't, like, it can't see the center line. Right. It just knows via GPS where the center line should be given the runway and the database and the direction of the runway. Sure, and it's only as accurate as the accuracy yep. of the GPS and, and like the um, the display will show that it's 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 on the center line, but the reality is it's, yeah, it might it's be a 10, 10 feet left and that's just within the margin of error. Well, thanks for the demo. That was that was a, that was a, a first.